Rusted Dodd from the Athletics, still in Phoenix. The party going on, is it? You know, it's it's almost like uh, the the next day hangover. You know, I think people are worn down uh, late night last night. Uh, no matter if you were a fan or a writer or whatever, but uh, but yeah, so it, it's calmed down a little bit. I think people are trying to get out of town. All right, so in the end, you've had a little bit of time to reflect on it, uh, probably not 24 hours, but you know, certainly a little bit of time. Your thoughts about the game, you know, just how good a game was it for the neutral? Well, I mean, I think it lived up to the expectation, which was that it was going to be a great game. I, I think it was. I mean, I, I think I, I saw some discussion about where this Super Bowl ranks in, in the history of Super Bowls and some people were even putting it, you know, close to the top. And to me, it, it, the only thing it lacked was, uh, a, a, you know, a fantastic ending. Um, and it was a little anticlimactic, uh, you know, whether, you know, with the late holding call that allowed the Chiefs to kick the game-winning field goal and kind of, you know, waste those last few minutes. Um, so, you know, no matter how you feel about that penalty, it, it did, you know, lead itself to not, you know, you know, in, in the perfect world, you know, Patrick Mahomes makes some incredible play and or, you know, in the final seconds and something we'll remember forever. And, you know, we didn't get that. But I, I think overall, just the, the level of play between the two teams, uh, probably the two best teams in the NFL and two quarterbacks playing at the top of their game. Um, so I think it was a great Super Bowl. Yeah, let's just talk about that ending because it was a fizz of an ending. And the, and I think for the neutrals, for us who always just want a great game in Super Bowl, if you're not supporting either team, it doesn't really, really you, know, you, just, you, just, you just want a great contest. Look, it was a fizz of an ending. At the same time, it was perfect game management from Andy Reid. That's how you shut the door. That's how you win it. That's how you walk off as being the champion. No, definitely. I mean, the, the Chiefs have a, a saying for that, uh, that time of the game. They call it church mode. Um, and, you know, and I, I honestly, I would love to ask somebody exactly what that means. I sort of have an idea why they call it church mode, but essentially that means like, you know, don't for a touchdown. We're trying to take this down to, you know, the final seconds and then kick the game winning field goal. Um, and, you know, it's funny because if, you know, if you watch the Chiefs oftentimes, you know, one of their issues in the years past is that they oftentimes score so quickly. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's, Sometimes, you know, when you were trying to drive down and time that perfect, you know, game-winning field goal at the last second, this is difficult to do because, um, you know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive, but then if, you don't, if you're not aggressive enough, all of a sudden you find yourself in a third down and then all of a sudden you've given up a possession. So um, it, it was, you know, well played, I feel like, by, by the Chiefs. And, you know, that late holding penalty, it was probably by the letter of the law, it was a penalty. I mean, the... Uh, Bradbury from the Eagles even sort of admitted as such, um, but it is just sort of right on that borderline where you do kind of ask yourself, would it be best for everybody if if, if that penalty wasn't called? Um, and I, I don't feel like I have a great answer for that because I do think the game should be sort of officiated like like they normally would be, and there, there was sort of a hold on that play. Um, so yeah, I don't know, but it was that was the only. The only thing we, we sort of missed was just the ending. Yeah, look, and it was a hold. I mean, the guy said it was a hold. If you're, if you're a fan of, of, of any team, you want that to be called as a hold, uh, just because it didn't have the spectacular ending, which everyone wanted Jalen Hurts to get one more shot at it, didn't they? And, 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 of course, that didn't actually happen. A couple of other things about it. Yeah. Surely they've got to do something now about that surface, don't they? Because you can't have the biggest game of the sport and one of the biggest contests in the world and, and have it on a, on a slippery surface like that. It's just silly. No, that uh, that to me is a, a bigger issue than than the officiating. Uh, certainly last night, um, you know, the Chiefs opened their season in Arizona against the Cardinals in Week One um, and had two, uh, you know, significant injuries. Uh, Harrison Butker, their kicker, had an ankle sprain that kept him out, uh, you know, for weeks and weeks. And then Trent McDuffie, a rookie cornerback, uh, also had a you know a knee issue um, that, uh, or maybe excuse me, a hamstring. Um, that kept him out for about, you know, six, seven, eight weeks. Um, so this has, you know, been an issue in that stadium for years. You know, there's a lot of high uh, quality, like high-profile college games played there. 
um, as well, um, you know, like national championship kind of caliber games, and they've had issues with in those games as well. So it's not like it's a new problem, and it was supposed to be corrected, uh, but for reasons that, you know, are above my knowledge base about, you know, growing grass, <laughs> um, you know, I, they, they just haven't done it. So it's, it, it was not a good look for the NFL, and they have to figure out a way uh, you know, to prevent that from happening in the future. Rustin Dodds from The Athletic. Yeah, I mean, you've got the game's greatest players, and they're all skating around like they're on ice. It just, As I said, it just looks dumb, doesn't it? Did Philadelphia blow that game? Was it inexperience? What, what do you pinpoint as to why the sudden change in the second half when they looked as though they had it and then they just couldn't really get any run, run game going after that? You know, I don't think you could say they blew the game. I mean, they obviously had control of it in the first half. Um, you know, I think they played about as good as they could. You know, obviously, you know, you the, to me the biggest question, if you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles, the way they played that game was punting the ball on a fourth and two in your own territory. Uh, when I think they were down, the Chiefs had just scored to go up 28-27, I believe. And they punted right back to them, deep in their own territory. And they'd been so aggressive all game and going for it in those short yarded situations. Yeah, it would be a you know a big aggressive move to go it on your side of the field like that. But I think that was the one play call where, and then they had the punt return, and the Chiefs scored very quickly, and then took control of the game, you know, of their own. And I, that's the one thing. If you're an Eagles fan, I I would be like, eh, if. You know, if you go for that, you extend the drive, you go down and score, you take the lead back, I maybe it's a different game. Austin, is, is Patrick Mahomes, you know, he, there's so much talk about him and, and where he sits now in the pantheon of all the greatest players in that. How good is he to you? Do, you? do you rate him now after that a hell of a lot better than you did before that? Did he need another one to validate? I think he did. But, I mean, I think he would probably say the same thing if you asked him that question because he wants to be – you know, among the greats. Um, and I think, you know, he's going to be judged in his career by how many Super Bowls he wins. Um, and I think, you know, so it's a difficult discussion, right? Because he's played five years. And so if you're just looking at the, you know, the full resume, uh, you know, it's it's not going to compare to, you know, somebody like Tom Brady or even, you know, some other quarterbacks who have won multiple Super Bowls. Um, but I think if you're just looking at, has anybody played the position of quarterback at a higher level like ever? And I think the answer might be no. Um, and so, you know, he's going to have to continue to, you know, maintain that level and we'll see how long he can do it. You know, can he, you know, play at this level for another decade, you know, well into his you know mid to late thirties as some other quarterbacks have done, you know, we'll have to see, but, I don't know that anybody's had a start to a career like that. And I just don't know that anybody's played the position at a higher level, um, you know, consistently, you know, I, I, I just think, you know, he's had, you know, five seasons. He's won two MVPs. He's probably had about, I think maybe if you looked at his two best seasons, so maybe 2018 with his, the first year starting, and then maybe his second best season would be this season, just, you know, statistically, and maybe arguably this is his best season because of the, the, the receivers he had around him. I think those two seasons may be in the top, you know, five seasons that any quarterback has ever had. And if you look at his other three seasons, I think those might be in the top 20 seasons any quarterback has ever had. Um, so, you know, your his bar is so high that I just don't think anybody's played at this level. Um, now, can he go out and win seven Super Bowls and, and tie Tom Brady? Probably not. I mean, I just, you know, the, the odds are, that, you know, you're, you, you know, you roll the dice enough times, you flip a coin enough times, you know, it's going to end up on the wrong side and you're going to lose some of these close games. So, you know, can he put together a career where he wins, you know, four to five Super Bowls and owns every career record? I think that's possible. Um, so, I don't know, we'll see, but it, it'll be, you know, fantastic to watch. Are they a popular side, Kansas City, in in the United States? Like, if, as for, for for neutrals, or do neutrals not care about things like that? I mean, you just look at Mahomes; he looks like such a good guy. You look at LeBron, who's just created that, you know, just uh, achieved that amazing record, beating Kareem's point scoring record. He comes across as such a good guy. Tom Brady comes across as such a good guy. Does this kind of stuff matter to people or not? No, I think it does. I mean, 
the Kansas City Chiefs are a historic franchise in the sense, uh, you know, they, they have, you know, a, a devoted fan base. They're obviously in a much smaller market, um, and they have a lot of tradition. They don't have a lot of tradition winning, but I think they're viewed as, you know, um, you know, you know, a, a, a franchise with a lot of tradition, but they don't have the brand that, you know, like the global brand of, you know, the Dallas Cowboys or, um, you know, the New England Patriots or the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I think that's going to change. I, I think, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes is going to elevate, you know, the Kansas City Chiefs who are, if you look at just the 32 teams in the NFL, I think the city of Kansas City is, I think, around the 29th or 30th biggest city uh, of the cities that have uh, NFL teams. But I think Mahomes is going to be able to elevate th- that um, team into, you know, a stratosphere that's kind of reserved for, you know, the the best brands in their sports. So um, we'll see. But it, I I think, you know, especially if they add a few more Super Bowls in the next few years, I, you're just going to continue to hear more and more about the Kansas City Chiefs. We thank you so much for your time. Rustin Dodds from The Athletic, still in Phoenix. It's interesting listening to you and talking to you because I know that you obviously, I mean, this is like, oh, oh, I mean, you'll probably get a couple of days off and all of that after this. But there's no kind of euphoric buzz going on. And I think we feel like that here too. Just the way that the game finished was just so uh, lackluster that it doesn't leave you feeling on a high like you kind of feel like you should be feeling. Is that, is that, am I, am I onto something? Yeah, I think there's probably something to that. Um, you know, I, I left that game thinking, <laughs> and this is not what you asked, but I left that game thinking these two teams are going to play in the Super Bowl next year um, because, uh, you know, the Chiefs, I think, will be the clear-cut favorite, and the Eagles will have most of their roster back and their quarterback under contract. I, I think if you're, if you're looking for a better finish, it may be in the Super Bowl next year that they, these two teams may be playing against each other next year as well.